forming sentences right now. All right, so today it is Foundation Friday and we're gonna be talking about the JCAT Cushion Compact Foundation. I asked you guys on Snapchat a few weeks ago, you voted between the CoverGirl Foundation and this foundation, and I already did the review on the CoverGirl Foundation if you missed that one, so now we are testing out this bad boy. Completely forgot to film the first half of this video, so it's actually a few hours later when I'm filming this. Literally got four hours of sleep last night and then drove an hour and a half this morning. Christy and I were doing hair until four in the morning. Slightly sleep deprived right now. I leave for New York tomorrow morning, my time, so I'm doing five billion things today. Slightly stressed, slightly all over the place, but we're filming this Foundation Friday. Also, if the quality looks different, slash not as good, slash the lighting is weird. I'm on the Sony A5100 today because my Canon literally just broke this morning before filming this. I'm having the weirdest luck today. So anyways, let's talk about the foundation. So during 15 days of foundation, I did a review on the J-Cat Skin Sealer Foundation. I wasn't a huge fan of that one. I'm gonna leave that review down below if you missed it. But that was a liquid foundation. They recently came out with an actual compact foundation, which is awesome. I love how more American brands are starting to hop on the cushion train. My favorite cushion foundation I've tried is the Misha Magic Cushion. Did a review on that too, so I'll leave that down below. JCAT you can get at Ulta. I don't believe I've seen the cushion compact sold at Ulta yet. But JCAT does carry this on their website. You get 14 grams, no, 13 grams of product in here. And just to give you a comparison, in the Misha you get 14 grams of product, so just a tiny bit less in here. I have the shade 101 Porcelain, which is the lightest shade. So this product retails for $17.99, and if I'm being totally honest, I think that that's pretty high. Obviously you have more high quality packaging than you do with just a flip powder or a liquid foundation so I'm assuming some of the cost is because of the packaging but it just seems very high. But when you run out of the cushion product you don't have to buy a whole new compact you literally just get the refill and the refill is only $12.99. It comes in eight shades which if you think of in terms of normal foundation that's pretty crappy but because this is a cushion product, I feel like that's actually pretty good. I'm not sure how deep the darkest shade goes, but you guys will see. I have the lightest shade, so you'll see how it goes on in a second. Their claims are pretty limited on here, so I'm just gonna breeze through this. It says it's skincare plus makeup. Doesn't really say what kind of skincare benefits this has. They say daily sun exposure 45 plus protector. I'm not sure if they're trying to say SPF 45. I don't see anything about that anywhere else on the packaging. Okay, so there's actually more claims on the box than online, so I'm just gonna read this. It says it's a multitasking formula that delivers flawless coverage, sun protection, and hydration in an invisible flawless airbrush application without streaks or unevenness of makeup. Flawless natural coverage, and that's pretty much it. So let's jump into the first impression. I feel like my brain is a mashed potato right now. But if you wanna see my thoughts on this foundation and how it applies and wears throughout the day, you're in the right place, just keep watching. All right, so Sony camera does have a little bit of a blurring effect to the face. I don't have that feature turned on, but it still blurs and makes your face look better than it actually is. So since this is a foundation video, just keep that in mind. This is literally my only option today, so we're doing it. For the most part, any cushion foundation I've ever used has applied better with the actual sponge that it comes with. That's how it's made to apply for me. It always works better with the sponge that it comes with, but for the sake of the video, I will try a brush on one side of my face and the compact sponge on the other side. As far as the packaging, I really like this metallic thing they have going on. Also really like the inside of this. Totally black. Love the all black. Love the black sponge. I haven't seen this with the cushion foundation before. And like with normal cushion products, they have this little sealant thing where you push it all the way down. If you don't push it all the way down, your product will dry out. They want to make sure you do that and then you just peel this off. And there we go. This is the most satisfying thing ever. All right, I'm gonna zoom you in because I can. I have primed my face with the Jouer Anti-Blemish Matte Primer that I've been using every day. Well, let's go in with product. So I'm gonna use the sponge first on this side and then go in with a brush maybe on this side. I don't know, we'll see. Whoa, this is a firm compact, I feel like. Ooh, right off the bat, I can tell the formula of this is a little bit, I don't think stiffer is the right word, but it kind of feels like it just isn't sliding around as much even just an application. The shade is actually pretty light and very pink toned. I wasn't expecting that looking at the pan. We'll see if this oxidizes, but so far off the bat, this looks like one of the lighter cushion foundations I've seen. You do really have to push down in this cushion to get product out. It has a scent. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's coming back. It smells like something from childhood. I don't know. So far with the sponge, I would say it's low medium coverage, highlight low medium on that one layer. You can still see some redness and stuff coming through. My skin doesn't look totally flawless, but 
I kind of like that just for something quick. It evens out my skin tone, but it's not making it look totally full coverage yet. So this time I'm going to try brush. I'm just stippling it straight into that compact. I don't know if it's going to take anything off. And I'm using my Sigma F80, by the way. So yeah, it's pretty much picking up no product, especially because you have to really push down in this compact. If you want like ultra, ultra light coverage, maybe a brush would be good. But I definitely think we're gonna switch back to the sponge. So I definitely feel like I don't need any more product on my forehead. My forehead looks pretty flawless. But I am gonna go in just with a little bit more down here to see if I can build that up and get a little bit more coverage. Wow, that looks good. Kind of impressed with this one at this point. The finish of this is very beautiful super skin-like. I don't really see any texture on my face right now. My pores don't look like amazing. You can see my pores right here, but they don't look ultra large. Since I don't have as much to cover up on this side, I'm just going in with a tiny bit more. So before I apply concealer and the rest of my makeup and everything, I'm going to show you guys a close-up. Right now, this is looking very nice. Beautiful finish. Kind of just looks like your skin, but better. Ooh, it actually feels like it's starting to set. Okay, that's exciting because every other cushion foundation I've used, it has a very, not wet, but you definitely need to set it or else like your hair is just gonna stick to it. It just feels kind of sticky usually. A little bit is coming off when I'm tapping, but it's not majorly transferring. If I don't have to set this, I'm gonna be freaking thrilled. So I'm gonna go in with my under eye concealer and give that a few minutes to set just so I can see if I'm gonna need a powder or not. You can really see with this concealer how pink toned the foundation is. Feels like it hasn't totally set like the forehead has yet. So it probably needs a good, yeah, this feels great. Five more minutes or so. So I'm gonna go do the rest of my makeup right now. It is 12, 17, I'm getting a late start today. My life is a shit show right now, which I probably already told you all about. Let's call the check-in time, 12, 15. I will be right back once I have the rest of my face on. Okay, so it's now 12, 42. I don't know why that took me a half hour. I literally did nothing on my face. Just did super basic makeup today because I have a bunch of errands to run. I gotta say, right now, at this point in time, this looks pretty bomb. If you don't like dewy products, you won't like this unless you set it with a matte powder. But if you do, look at this glow right now. I love the way it looks on my forehead. It looks super natural, but it's set. I didn't powder my face at all. I only used bronzer and it blended out totally fine. I used the Pixi by Petra Subtly Sun Touch. Love this bronzer. And I tried for the first time the Catrice Sun Glow in 030 medium bronze. I just like mixed these two together for my face. Highlight is the Goddess of Love. And then my lips are Too Faced Lip Injection, the gloss in Angel Kisses. I've been wearing this a ton. Love this, but it definitely burns. It's like one of those plumping things. So right now, I really don't have any complaints. I do have combination skin and I tend to get oily throughout the day on my T-zone, but there are certain foundations where I can just tell when I put them on that I don't need to set it with a powder and there are others that it's the opposite. So this was just one that I don't really feel like I need to set just the way that it's setting on my face, but I'm hoping that we don't get super oily throughout the day because right now it looks beautiful. So I'm going to go about my day and I will check back in a few hours. I am going to do the next check-in in natural lighting so you can see how the foundation looks there. All right, so it's now 3.33, so the foundation's been on for a little over three hours. I'm headed out of the house right now for a couple hours, so I wanted to check in a little bit early and get some natural light so you guys can see. I think it looks pretty dang good. It looks very skin-like, but it still has coverage. I feel like it's one of those foundations where you could get a lighter coverage if you wanted, or you can build it up like I did and get more of a medium coverage. But I do think next time I could even get away with one layer if I just spot concealed a little bit. Shade-wise, this one is a little bit too pink for me. If they have one that's a little more beige or neutral toned, I'll probably be purchasing that one if I like this by the end of the night. The shade doesn't look bad, I just think it's a tiny bit off. So this camera's obviously a little bit different than the one I usually film with, but you can still see up close. I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit oily around my nose. Brown hair looks pretty good. No major lip creasing or anything. My forehead looks, it's actually looking shinier on here than it does in real life for some reason. It just looks dewy, no oil is coming off or anything. Right now, no major complaints. I'm going to go carry out my day and I'll check back in at the end of the night. It's now 9.30 p.m. So the foundation's been on for a little over nine hours and I literally feel like I'm sleepwalking at this point. I've been packing for like the last three hours and working and trying to get my life together and trying to stay awake. Let's look at the foundation. By the way, red lipstick, so I was just playing around with colors to bring to New York. I think you guys can see on this camera 
how oily I am. There's just pretty much oil all over my face right now. I was checking pretty much every hour and I would say it looked good up until about the seven hour point maybe, six or seven hour point, it was pretty good still. But I do think that obviously if you have oily skin, you're gonna need to set this one. At the same time though, the cushion foundations are never super long lasting on me. My Misha cushion doesn't get this oily I feel like without a powder, but it definitely isn't like a long wearing foundation. And this product didn't claim to be super long wearing, but it is super oily. Like next time if I'm gonna be wearing it for more than five hours, I'll probably powder my face with it. It looks really good when it first goes on. I think it looks pretty damn good for the first few hours. So if you're looking just for something to throw on when you're going to run errands or whatever and you're just gonna be back at home and you don't care how your face looks in a few hours, I think it would be good. If you're trying to find like a new favorite all day long wear foundation, I don't think this is the one for you. Dry skin, you might really like this though because it is very moisturizing when it goes on. I almost think the way that this one went on and since it is pretty hydrating, I think it might work for mature skin. So I don't think this one was bad by any means. I actually think the finish of it and the way it first goes on is very beautiful. I think I'll still be using this. I would just use it to, like I said, go run errands for a few hours. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, join the Bayrito family and subscribe. Make sure you let me know down below what foundations you guys want to see next and in 15 days of foundation. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.